Hello, in this lab, you're going to be working with queues. Specifically, you're going to be working on modifying the array-based queue implementation that we came up with for this week. Now, there was a couple of flaws in the array-based queue class that we developed together. One was that if you call the DQ method and the queue is currently empty, it's going to throw a index out of bounds exception as it tries to work with the negative one um, index that was given to it. It instead, it would be better to throw a more specific exception. And the one that I think makes the most sense is the no such element exception. So one of the things you're gonna be doing with the queue class is changing it so that if you call DQ on an empty queue, it'll throw no such element. The other change that you're gonna be making is when you have the queue become full, Currently, what it's going to do is it doesn't detect that at all. If the array that it's using fills up, it's just going to wrap around the other side and start overflowing it. So instead, what we're going to do in this lab is write a method that will expand the queue automatically like we did for the dynamic list that we developed. Now, this is going to be slightly more complicated for a queue because of the wraparound issue, because when the queue fills up, it could be that like index five is the start and then it wraps around and then index four is the end. And so when you expand it, you can't just add on to the end because then you're going to be inserting things between the beginning and the end, if that makes sense. So instead what you need to do is you need to make a bigger array and then sort of like unroll the existing queue into the new array. So again, if it starts at five and then goes through to four wrapping around, what you're going to do is you're gonna start at five and put that into slot zero of the new queue, the new array, and then fill it up from five on to the end, and then from zero back to four, and sort of like unroll it so that it goes from zero up into however big the queue is. Then there will be new space at the end that can then be used for expanding on. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lab page for this and talk about how to do those two things. All right, so this lab, like I said, is going to be fixing two flaws in the queue. The first is quite simple. It's just to make it throw an exception when the queue is empty and we call the DQ method. You should throw the no such element exception in that case. And that's the simple one. The more complicated one is fixing the problem that happens when you call the in queue method when the queue is currently filled. As I explained, this is not so straightforward as it was for our dynamic array class because we can't just add space to the end of the queue. We need to flip it around so that it's in the right order so that it can be added to the end. And so I went ahead and developed an algorithm for this for you to use, which is on the lab page here. So the first thing you do is make a new array that's twice as long as the original array. Then you need to basically do this unwrapping operation where you take the original queue and find the start wherever that is and start copying it into slot zero. So original is sort of like our index into the original array, which is going to start at the start variable. Then we have another index, which I called now, which is the index into the new array. And so that starts at zero. So we're basically copying from the original start of the array, which might be at zero, but it also might be at someplace else if we had wraparound. And we're going to be copying it into this now thing. So then we're going to keep going while now is less than the original size of the array. So if you have 10 elements, you need to copy all of them so you loop 10 times. And then we copy the array at this original index into the new array at the, the new index, the now index. Then what you do is you increment now to move this index on. And then we also increment original. But because original didn't necessarily start at zero, it might have to wrap around. So we test for that as well. If the original is equal to the old size of the array, we have to wrap it back around to zero. Then all of the data should be copied. So then we set start to zero because now we've moved the start of the queue to be for sure in index zero and set end to be now minus one, which is the old sort of like size of the array and then start using new array instead of the old array. So this algorithm here will let you resize the queue. So basically you have some steps to do. You're gonna start by downloading this arrayq.java, which is the code that we came up with in part one of this module. Then if you compile and run it right away, it's gonna do two things that are wrong. One, it's gonna repeat some of the numbers that are being enqueued because when it wraps around, if we didn't detect that the queue is full, it's just gonna overwrite stuff that was there in the beginning of the queue. And it's also gonna crash with an exception. 
So then you should do a few things. Add the code to the in queue method to check if the array is full before doing anything else. And then if so, call a method called resize, which you're going to write. Then write the resize method using this algorithm here. So you're adding one method to resize the queue, and then you're calling that from the in queue method at the appropriate spot. Then you can do the other thing which we have to do for this lab, which was to put code into the DQ method that checks when the queue is empty. And if so, it should throw an exception. I think no such element makes the most sense. That's what Java's built-in queue throws in this situation. So then for testing it, when you're done, it should produce the following output, printing one through 18 and an exception thrown correctly. If you're getting the numbers out of order, then something went wrong with your resize method. And if you're not getting all of them, then you didn't successfully resize it and give it new space to write into. So when you get this, you know you've pretty much done it perfectly, so you can go ahead and turn it in on Canvas. Like always, if you're stuck on anything with this lab, please let me know. Thanks.